more or less talk about uh, calf now and uh, the ban on Teslim Balogun Stadium. I mean, I don't know, I don't know when last you were at Teslim. I know you don't, you don't love going to work games, but I mean, I saw, I, I saw this coming. You know, the, the facilities around. Let me just uh, read, read this uh, report. The long list. Yeah, you know. I'm not going to read the whole letter, just a short report I we did. So, uh, the SECA bans Teslim Balogu Stadium, the Confederation of African Football have confirmed an automatic stadium ban on the Teslim Balogu Stadium in Lagos, which hosted three of the Qatar 2022 World Cup qualification games. Following an inspection visit by CAF officials, the stadium was approved to undertake the final game of the second round qualifying series against Cape Verde before the mandatory ban. African football's governing body highlighted a series of infrastructural shortcomings. Now, this is an infrastructural shortcomings in the arena ranging from the pitch quality dressing room equipment stadium facilities to welfare measures for fans officials and media so calf also stated that these requirements must be met and another inspection will be passed before the stadium is approved for another official game now the next game for us is the playoffs in march i will play that one in abuja so um i don't know if uh the people in Lagos are going to put all this together before that game in March. They will not or, put it together. But, but I mean, what, what can you say of this band? I, I've been at the stadium, you know, the facilities, you know, the things around are not really... That stadium, that stadium is not good enough. The best that stadium can host is Lagos State FA Cup. That's where it ends. That stadium is gone. We, we like to deceive ourselves because of this urge for... we want to steal money that doesn't even reflect in our lives nigeria is the only country where the rich and the poor are suffering equal measure they are suffering the same way if you're rich you have your generator it's killing you with noise it's putting fume in the air you're breathing uh carbon dioxide that you're not supposed to uh, uh you mean you know taking rubbish that you're not supposed to be taking in now that said look at the stadium remember when we interviewed gunner Raw? And he said to us that he had just gone to Garua after the draws of the African Nations Cup. And yeah. he saw the pitches in Cameroon. And he was asking, why can't Nigeria have such pitches? And we were talking about it here. And some bloody idiot, one Bolaji Bosa and some idiot were saying that uh, the Tesla Malongo pitch is good enough. Oh, you know, these people who say these things don't even know the, the size of a football. They don't know the diameter of a football. But they come online or they come everywhere and they talk rubbish. And I remember saying that the Teslim Balogo pitch is a useless pitch. Even the Abuja pitch that they said they've added over is rubbish. I entered that stadium a couple of months ago. It's not good. It cannot withstand the pressure of 22 people running with their studs on it. But Nigerians like to be delusional. We like to deceive ourselves. We have a very big edifice there. Just to do the right thing. What we'll go and do is we'll go and get panel and uh, this Lagos State logo. I don't know who told them that once you use the Lagos State logo to cover something, it means that the thing is good. You cannot be papering over cracks all the time. That's one of the reasons why I try to distance myself from anything around it. Because, first off, the person that is the chairman of Lagos State Sports Commission is my boy, like my, my big bros. And sometimes I try to stay away because I don't want... See, I don't want to put him on blast. Because sometimes when I look at the waste facilities are in lagos i feel very terrible look at the campus mini stadium i've spoken i've asked and you know some things just don't work and then in the, the state where they are talking of a work of peace but I, I, I understand i understand this is a state where you know they've gone from excellence to camatos lagos state is not the center of excellence that it used to be i know that people will not be happy that i'm saying this but it is the truth it's just terrible the testing my logo shouldn't even have hosted all those games at all because most times it makes it difficult for you to criticize the coach or even the players because the pitch is not good there is nothing anybody would tell me i've played football long enough to know when you see a good pitch there. when you go to ikene look at that pitch there that uh college and i put together that's a football pitch you can play that but if you put too much pressure on it you know the thing about football it is not it's not the beauty of the the one it is the maintainers crew that you put together to always turn over maintainers you know, that's so. why i have always said that let us imbibe something that europeans have been doing for the last 30 40 years let's get if you build a stadium get a small place where you groom the grass to groom a grass, how do they do it? They take the dimension of the field, 
okay they take the dimension of the field there's a technology that that does that they use they take the dimension of the field and they cut it into layer and then they they plant the grass somewhere and then they roll it and come and lay it every now and again you can't grow grass and just depend on oh what i eat and then no that's not how it works the chelsea feed the, the Tottenham feed all those speeches you see in europe that we love they are taken care of and almost everybody who runs sports in nigeria are fans of one big club in europe or the other they've been to those stadiums they've seen it that's the reason is the practical reason why i don't want to be seen around it because these guys are a bunch of failures marauding themselves parading themselves like oh they are doing us favor no they are not they are failing i passed through i passed through nikon uh, on my way to campus square and i was already seeing the side of the stadium i was like okay this one not rotting, not rotting, so there is no you see let's, let, let me tell you one of the things that we've not learned let me tell you one of the things we've not learned a stadium is meant to be a company once you build a stadium you have created minimum five thousand job once you have a stadium the tesla balogu stadium is supposed to be a company it's not enough to give all these women who say gala and uh, Nakasera and the rest to hang around the stadium that stadium complex is a company. There are some people are supposed to have offices who people who are responsible for grooming grass, people who are responsible for water treatment, people who are responsible for ev just about everything. And then the stadium itself will generate money to pay for diesel for generator, to pay for the but the, the lawnmower that takes care of it, the grandsmen and everything. That's when you know you have a stadium. But when I say these things. People look at me like, what are you saying? I, I know that we cannot have an uh, a, a utopian world, but we shouldn't be the worst of the dystopian uh, uh, community or society. Everything we do is so at the very, very bottom of the food chain of a dystopian society. It shouldn't be like that. We should stand up. But then, you know, this whole Egbami Egbami culture makes us hide the truth from the people. Okay. I don't know if the government approves the money, but then there are some basic things that we should do. Some, some things are just basic. Relaying uh, AstroTurf on Campus Square. Campus Square is half a football field. Relaying uh, AstroTurf shouldn't be such a magical thing. I saw that they are adding extra uh, side to the uh, Onikos Stadium, and I was asking myself, this stadium not get planned. When they build this stadium, was there no plan, no building plan to it? this new part that they are adding now is this not the part that will collapse one day and fall on somebody's head because it wasn't I, I i don't i don't know whether it was necessary the beauty of the stadium will just go away and this is what we do constantly i just hope that we know what we're doing anyway but like i said from the beginning lagos have no business hosting the super eagles because lagos does not have a football feed thank god they are going to take the super eagles away from lagos at least all the prostitutes in the hotel would leave the super eagles players alone because it's also going very expensive to travel from lagos to abuja and then the super eagles players will go to abuja there's a different uh, kettle of fish to battle with over there but at least he, those ones have had their food their, their their food day in lagos let's take the team to abuja and uh, i don't know I've, I've i've not been to the abuja stadium before i don't know what the not just the pitch now you know we, we, we saw that uh, dangote have handed it over to the, to the sports ministry i don't know if abuja as well will meet up with the facilities you know it's not just about the pitch and uh, the scoreboard it's not just peace scoreboard abuja, and everything. abuja, abuja so have we, we don't know we don't know the abuja, abuja stadium is still i mean it was built in 2003 come on you know compare it with this uh, 1974 stadium uh abuja have a good a good stadium facility wise have a good stadium if there is anything they want to do they need to just brush up uh yeah. to save us the stress in march uh nff president knows how to invite anybody to his house he could just invite the inspection team to come now and see That's okay true. liaise with the sports minister let them come and see if there is anything they need to brush up on between now because if i was the one that gave dango to the stadium what i would do is to liaise with calf and say okay look we are upgrading we're just renovating we're actually not upgrading. we're renovating send your special team to come and tell these construction people to do because construction people are engineers they will do what they are asked to do go and do grass go and fix the scoreboard do this one do that one some of the seats and all that and there's a stock of VR now for the for the players abuja, abuja will be good to have a VR because what happened with south africa and ghana is enough now I, I like those situation when it happened that time the one thing that i said is thank god this thing happened and people were like why are you saying thank god people were insulting me i said thank god this thing happened because now africa will not realize that they need the var and then again when Jurgen club said that the little tournament people were angry 
a continent that that that, that cannot even put out var is getting angry that they call them little tournament you know you sometimes we don't now uh Jürgen Klopp will be somewhere looking at Teslim Balogun. Nigeria is one of the top five countries in Africa. Cannot provide a good stadium for you to play its own matches. And when they call your tournament Litu, Una provoke. Where are all the people where they shout for media, say uh Jürgen Klopp, may they cut Jürgen Klopp. Eh, where are they now? Why are they not speaking now? Kill, kill Jürgen Klopp because they look for clout, they want popular. Why are they not talking now? Because they're afraid I be. You know, and even in the talk of the cup, I don't know how true it is. The, there's this talk that it's going to be postponed or moved over to Qatar or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. The playoff? No, uh, the AFCON itself. You know, there's this talk <laughs> Cameroon is not ready. I don't know how true it is that Cameroon is not ready. When, when they plan to host it, they, they were prepared for 16 teams. You know, it has been expanded. Anywhere, to now. anywhere they like, and let them take it to. If they take it to Qatar, Jürgen Klopp will just be drinking peanut, pina colada and be laughing again. I say, did I not told, tell you people that it's a little tournament? You people think I'm joking. It, an entire continent of 54 countries cannot find a country or a couple of countries to come together to host their tournament. And you guys say, what is the difference between invitational tournament and the AFCON? Now, this conversation we're having now. What's the difference between an invitational, a little unknown invitational tournament like the Arab, uh, this thing that Egypt and the rest were playing? And this very th- Let, let's be honest, let's be frank for once in our life. Let's not let our ego, our egotistic nature that has destroyed everything that making us not to humble ourselves to put work in place, uh, decide for us. What is the difference now? Let's sit down. I'm wanting to see you oh, if, they, if, they, if they take it to Qatar. I'm going to food my I, I don't if it is anywhere they take it to, I'll be there, so I'm not a problem. I mean, it's I mean, the, I mean, it's an African tournament playing it in Qatar. I, I, I just don't empty stadiums. I just don't know, I, and the, the new COVID variant as well might just want to hamper hamper things as well. We've seen the UK add some African countries to their to their red list due to the new variant. I don't know, I don't know what's happening. But I mean, for the Afcon, I wanted to stay in Cameroon. The man where you have plans, you have plans. <laughs> I really want to stay in Cameroon. Anywhere they take it, I, I have a contract that says I must be there, so I'm going to honor my contract. All right, that's that's it about that. And you are listening. Well, like better TV radio.